Welcome governors. Hey, this is Adishi here, and before we start this video, I want to do a quick update of what we've got coming up next. So we closed out the series on troop type, and I was really happy with how that came out. I, I hope you guys really enjoyed that series. In the next series we're going to do is going to be on leadership. And we've kind of been going back and forth on how I want to do this, and uh, we have some really cool people within my alliance that are going to help with that next series. And we'll dig into topics like migration, building an arc team, kind of setting a culture for an alliance and a kingdom, and uh, KVK preparations. So we're really excited about that series. I think we're going to do some really, really cool things with it. But it's just taken a little bit longer, so I apologize about the delay on that. But that's what we've got coming up. But of course, this video, uh, I want to talk about how I look at commander pairings. And before we start, there are two people that I want to thank for this video that helped me do some testing. And they are Red, whoop, that's not the right button, uh, Red, who helped me with some uh, testing of Khan, and also Winston, uh, who did the same. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to those two and say thank you. All right, well, let's get into the video. So. I get a lot, asked a lot, is X and Y Commander a good pairing? And a lot of the time, some of it seems kind of simple, uh, but I really look at it in four categories. The first three categories are kind of the pros, right? And that is, do they set up some type of combo? Do they synergize or try to achieve some type of similar goal? Or do they complement each other? Or is it a combination of all three? Now, the fourth thing that I look at is, is there any type of anti-synergy? Now, if two commanders do have anti-synergy, that doesn't mean they won't work together. It just means that you're going to lose some functionality, something to keep in mind. So, kind of at the start here, when I say combos, what I mean, and, well, actually, we got to back up because we got to talk about what a cycle looks like. So what I define a cycle, or an active skill cycle, is the time frame from when the primary commander casts their active skill until that primary commander casts their active skill again. And how this plays out in a normal, without any rage gen added in, is generally you're looking at 10 seconds. So on turn 0, I would consider that the turn that the primary commander casts their active skill then, of course, on turn two would be the turn that the secondary commander casts their active skill. And that's how the cycle goes. All right, so let's get into what combo means. So when you look at a commander like Charles Martel, his active ability increases damage for 30%. And, of course, it gives a shield, but it increases damage by 30% for four seconds. So if you kind of game this out, how does that play out? On turn zero, there's a shield cast. And then on turn one, two, three, and four, you do 30% increased damage. So if then you go down to like a big skill damage champion, which a lot of people use for this combo purpose, is going to be YSG. You'll see that his ability just does a bunch of skill damage in a big AoE. And of course, when you get the expertise, it makes it a 360 AoE. So Charles Martel casts his active. And then on turn two, when YSG casts his active, you do 30% more damage. You're setting up a combo. Now there's a lot of other champions that do something very similar. And let's look at Ethel. So Ethel doesn't boost her own damage, but she does debuff the enemy. So this is a debuff that reduces their attack, defense, and health by 30%. So when you decrease their attack, of course, that's just making it so you take less damage. But when you decrease their defense or their health, or a combination of both, now you're making it so they take more damage. So you can do this same combination. Plays out a little different because this only lasts two seconds, but same concept. Come back down and we'll look at YSG again. Ethel casts her active, debuffs the target for round one and two. Round two is when YSG casts his active, 
and now he does more damage because the target has lower defense and lower health. So combination, it's just in reverse, where instead of boosting your own damage, you're increasing the damage the target takes. Now, Alex is another good example of this. He does something very similar. Now, when we talk about combos, there is one thing I want to point out, and that's most of these commanders has an active that lasts two seconds. Alex and Charles last four, but there are some that last longer. And let's look at Julius Caesar. His actually lasts five seconds. So generally you're going to have combos that come up front and then boost the secondary, but we're going to come back to this and then we'll look at maybe how the secondary can boost the primary. But next we need to get into synergy. So synergy, we're going to look at Khan, who is a great example of this because Khan is really a one dimensional champion, right? He does lots of skill damage. His expertise allows him to do more skill damage and he has a lower rage requirement of 950 instead of a thousand and he can lower it further down to 850. So he can cast his active skills really fast or he can shorten the cycle from 10 seconds or 10 turns down to a very, very small number of something like six. And how do you get there? Well, when you come down to the skill tree, you'll notice he has rejuvenate, which gives him 60 rage when he casts his active, and then another 60 rage when the secondary casts. And he has feral nature, which can give you a 10% chance to generate 100 rage. So you can see how this quickly will add up and how he can cycle those skills very, very fast. So if you take a cycle from 10 seconds down to six seconds, you're basically increasing the damage you do by your skills by 40% because you're casting them 40% faster. Well, let's look at a way that you could then synergize or have another commander that's trying to do something very similar. And for that, we're gonna go all the way up to the top and look at Tao Tao. So once again, this is a commander that does pretty good skill damage, but he also has this ability over here that can do rage restoration. Similar to Feral Nature, where you have a 10% chance to restore this rage. So you can take that six second cycle and compress it down, typically to about five seconds, which is a really impressive number when you consider that you're now increasing your time that you cast by roughly 15 to 20%, which is roughly a 15 to 20% damage boost from your skill damage because of the skill. Normally you wouldn't get that kind of bonus, but because it's benefiting, those the commanders are working together and synergizing in a very similar way, this pair can do a lot of damage. And there's some other synergies you can get into. And another good one is going to be Attila Takeda. And if we look at what Attila tries to do, lots of normal attack damage, lots of counter attack damage. And if you go through, defense reduction, so more damage, more damage, more damage, and of course more damage when they're low, but it's all about that normal and counter attack damage. So what does Takeda do? Well, he debuffs the target, so they take additional damage when they take normal damage, and they just increase the amount of normal damage that they take. So in one commander, you have big normal and counter attack damage numbers. The other commander that you have increases the normal attack damage taken by the target, put them together, and it shouldn't surprise anyone that that combination is really, really effective. Some would say too effective, but that's for another discussion. All right, so the next topic we're gonna talk about, instead of synergizing, let's talk about complementing. And we'll go to Khan again for this one. Because another very, very common pairing with Khan is Khan does a tremendous amount of damage already. He has a tremendous amount of rage regen already. What he is missing is durability. So we can pair him with Saladin. So Saladin does nice skill damage with his active skill. So he's gonna benefit from the Khan rage regen, you know, the cycle being compressed, but he also has skill damage reduction and counterattack damage reduction 
and a decent amount of defense added in. So when you add those skills in, now all of a sudden your Khan Saladin March is way more durable. It's still doing lots of damage, you're still generating lots of rage, and those are skill damage, or your skill effects are still going off rapidly. But now you're complementing, instead of synergizing, you're complementing that con to make him more durable. I'm not saying one combination is better than the other combination, but just a different approach, and both work. Now this march is definitely more rounded. It's going to do less damage, though. So let's talk about uh, the fourth one here, and, and this one is pretty obvious most of the time, and that's anti-synergy. So most of the time anti-synergy is going to come from troop types, right? You're going to have an infantry commander that's going to increase infantry health. And then you'll have someone like a, oh, let's find Elsid, a archer commander who increases archer defense. Obviously, a troop cannot benefit from both archer defense and infantry health at the same time. So you're only getting the benefit of one of those skills. Anti-Synergy. Now, another way that you're going to have Anti-Synergy is by having a commander like Ethel. Now, what Ethel does is actually has a really nice attack bonus, but to get it, you have to have three different unit types. Well, that doesn't work out when you have a commander, and we'll use Khan again, who requires you to have only cavalry. So if you were to pair those two together, you cannot get the benefit of both skills at the same time. Anti-Synergy. Now, the last way you can really kind of get anti-Synergy is when you're really trying to do opposing things. And I don't want to go into this too much, but let's just talk about Khan again. And let's look at Attila. Attila reduces the amount of skill damage you do. Well, Khan is all about doing skill damage. So you have anti-synergy. Now the reason I want to point this pair out specifically though is because there is actually some synergy or complement of these two commanders. Now is that enough to overcome the anti-synergy that you're going to get from these skills? Well you're going to have to test that. But when you talk about uh, Attila and his primary skill, it lasts four seconds and it dramatically increases the amount of damage that he's going to do. Well, when you have a commander like Khan, who can take that 10 second window, compress it down to maybe a six or seven second window, with a Attila primary, you're not gonna get as much effectiveness, but you can still take that from say 10 to seven seconds. Well, that means you have an uptime of this skill before of 40% or four out of every 10 seconds. Well, now you're still having 4% but it's out of every seven seconds. So that can dramatically increase the uptime. That could, you know, that's really gonna take it from what, 40% and I'm gonna ballpark some numbers, 65% I think is what it roughly come out to. So you have increased the uptime of this skill by roughly 50%, which basically means you've increased the effectiveness of this skill by 50%. That's a huge bonus. Now, does that overcome the anti-synergy that you're gonna get because of the reduced skill damage? Well, it's worth testing. I don't know, but I just wanna point out that just because there's anti-synergy between commanders, that doesn't mean that they won't work together. That just means that you have to test it to make sure that it's worth and it can overcome kind of the downsides of that pairing. All right, so I think I've hit on that enough, um, but I do wanna come back to one thing and this is kind of tricky, and I want to point this out because a lot of people look at these commanders on the surface, and you really have to kind of dig in and understand the mechanics of this to see how they work, and you might find some pairings that quite, are, you know, quite surprising. Now, am I saying this is going to be an optimal pairing? No, but I do want to point out one thing, and we're going to go through this a little bit, and we're going to hit on Khan again, because I think it brings out a point that's uh, worth mentioning that just because it's not the optimal or the best pairing doesn't mean that it's not an effective pairing. And for this we're going to look at Khan and Julius Caesar. Now when you look at the surface they're going to say, oh, okay, I guess it would be 
okay, right? Well, what does Julius Caesar do? His active skill increases attack, defense, and damage bonus by 30% for five seconds. Now, as a con primary, we've already said that you're gonna have roughly a six second cycle. So if we were to play out how this actually works out, turn zero, Attila casts a skill, no bonus. Turn one, nothing. Turn two, Julius Caesar casts his active. So then on turn three, four, five, and six, which is now when Attila casts his active again, or basically turn zero, you still have this ability active. And actually, you're going to have this ability active on the first turn, and it'll fall off on the second turn when he casts it again, which means you won't have the bonus on the first round, but every time this cycle comes up again in the future, you're going to have this active when Attila's skill goes off. In addition, you're going to have this active for roughly 80% of the fight, 80 to 85% of the fight. So this combination, while it might not look great on the surface, there's not any type of synergy or combination going on, you are taking the uptime on this ability from 50% up to roughly 85%. That's a huge improvement on this skill, which is actually really good. And in addition, Julius Caesar is increasing the Attila skill damage by 30%, plus a little bit of tack on top of it. So we could say roughly 32 to 35% if we're gonna round it off. So that's a massive increase to both of those commander skills. Now, in addition, you're getting a little bit of defense on that high uptime, so you're getting the durability. And if we look at the second skill, you're getting more durability. That's actually, you know, it's nice to have 10% reduced damage. Now, most likely you're not gonna get low enough to get the additional reduced damage, but that's fine. 10% still solid. And let's look at his fourth skill, which is troop capacity. So if you're on the open field, you're gonna have 15% more troops, which basically equates to 15% more attack, 15% more defense, and 15% more health or survivability. And a nice little skill damage to go along with it. So while this pairing might not seem great on the surface when you dig underneath, it might perform pretty well. And actually the combat reports that I looked at from Red and Winston actually had them performing better than I would have expected. Now I'm not saying expertise these commanders, but it's really just to show you that you can get a lot more out of these commanders by digging a little bit more and understanding exactly what the commanders do and what they bring to the table. And then see if those two commanders can, you know, complement each other or synergize and achieve a single goal. All right, well, this video is kind of going a little bit long, so we'll probably wrap it up there. So I wanted to say uh, thank you for all the support you've given so far. If you like this video, uh, please hit like and share it with your alliance mates. Uh, if you're excited about the next series coming out in the uh, leadership, uh, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll see when those come out. Uh, hopefully we will be starting that series in the next few days. Thank you, and you guys have a good night.